Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin. Thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time and as always the fact that you have different uh, different places you can go to for coin related content. Everyone here appreciates you stopping by and, and listening in and leaving your comments. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about false markets. I had a, some comments recently um, about certain things being a false market and it really got me thinking about what is a false market? And so you guys can all think of that right away. And some of you who've been doing this for a while probably have things that pop in your head right away. Others, maybe you've never thought about this concept at all. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who don't think about this concept and kind of fall for things in the uh, realm of uh, buyer beware, right? Caveat emptor. And some of you all got hosed or your family member got hosed. You found this out later when you were trying to learn about the things that you inherited and you find out, oh, grandpa paid $10,000 for this $2,000 coin. Yeah, that's not a good, that's not a good thing. So what is, what is a false market? You know, one of the first things I think about with a false market is something that is uh, a one-way market. And by that, I mean, you know, they're being sold somewhere online or through a mail order company. And the only people who produce the item, sell the item, and there's no one else in the open marketplace that wants the item. That is that is a false market, that is a one-way market. So in coins, this does happen. I will say that traditionally or usually you think of things like anything by the Franklin Mint, uh, you think of plates with you know maybe the Beatles on it, things like that. Um, certain bobblehead dolls over history's time, right? But but for coins, you know, oftentimes what I think of in this marketplace is gonna be whatever, Trump coins, right, Biden bucks, you have all these novelty things, it'll be a, a big circle metal piece and it'll have a bank note and printed on it. All of this type of stuff that is not actually US legal tender, that is, that is just a false market. Someone is literally creating something that is not really, there's, there's no market support for it, right? So that is one way that there's a false market. Something that is simply created and the creator is the only one who's selling it. Another type of false market is really just something that is an overpriced market. Uh, this also is usually circles around the mail order companies where they overcharge for things. We saw a lot of that in COVID. You know, people were selling silver half dollars for 40 times the face value when the market value was like 15 times. And so this created all kinds of... Uh, it breaks my heart because I know that I'm going to be seeing bags of silver come back into the coin shop in a few years when some elderly person dies who was buying this garbage uh, from the newspaper. Just trash. Just trash. And, you know, it's out there all the time. And, and that is a false market in the way that they might be buying real coins, but they're hyped up and oversold, right? Uh, another type of false market, this one's a little trickier, is some of the mail order companies have self-support. Self-support is still a false market. What do I mean by that? So self-support is when a company comes out and they say they overprice an item. They'll have a coin that, in my example at the beginning, is worth a couple thousand dollars, so it'll be a, you know, maybe it's just a nice $20 gold piece. They will get some unsuspected person on the phone line and they will charge them $10,000 for it. So this is the tricky part. What happens is they will, someone is smart enough to take the coins to the local coin shop and they find out that the coin's only worth $2,000. This person then takes the coin back to the company and says, you're ripping me off. And they say, no, 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 they're ripping you off. We will buy back that coin at $8,000 right now. That's our normal restocking price. This shell game happens, this pyramid scheme happens until it doesn't. In other words, they will take the coins back at exorbitant premiums because they already made their money on the coins. You know, They, they already made $8,000 per coin as they sold them. They will take them back in just to fill orders that they have and they'll make $2,000 per coin on, on the resale to the next gullible person who's been you know, watching too much cable TV and is scared of the future of everything, right? And they're told you have to invest in this stuff and buy, you know, buy rare graded gold coins. 
Unfortunately, this type of stuff happens all the time. And so that false market's very tricky because you can redeem the coins for a certain amount of time until that coin company disappears. And so what these companies do is they basically just disappear. Uh, they completely dissolve the LLC and then they open up again with the exact same everything in place with a new name. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, it makes me a little angry, to be honest with you. And you won't like me when I'm angry. Most of you don't like me when I'm happy. So liking me when I'm angry might be a little bit harder. Uh, so if you have a single supplier for something, if you have a single source for something, if you're creating something, these are all things that I consider to be false markets. Uh, the thing that's kind of harder to understand sometimes is when there is something new to the marketplace that you're not sure how the market will react over time. So this sometimes involves things like U.S. Mint products, which traditionally, historically, U.S. Mint products are like quasi one-way markets. They're not really necessarily fake markets, but they're producing the coin. They're charging 100 bucks for a coin, brand new, that realistically in a couple of years might only be worth half of that. Right, so this is the type of thing where you know it's it's not exactly buyer beware in the sense that you're totally going to get hosed, but you need to understand that a lot of modern U.S. Mint products, and not just the U.S. Mint, but these other companies, these other countries that produce coins with limited quantities of a few thousand pieces, they're a little tricky. I won't call those fake markets or false markets necessarily, but you are paying that heavy premium up front. If there's enough demand on the backside the coins can maintain value. But that's the tricky thing. But you know that the coins won't maintain value if it's one of these ones where they're producing, you know, not a coin, so it's a private company, or there's someone who's just overcharging for stuff, right? Or they're, you know, producing whatever. But this is another thing. The modern U.S. market can be considered somewhat in, of a false market, but that has more to do with the fact that you have to pay their production cost for everything. So... If any of you guys have any ideas on more false markets, things in the coin market that you look at and you're just like, not a real thing, um, leave your comments down below. I will also mention um, false holders. So for those of you who don't know, there are a lot of grading companies out there, companies that, you know, they, they, put, their, they put coins in holders. Um, really, really, there's only a few. Uh, NGC and PCGS. After that, we're going to have the CACG grading coming out, which I think will hold its own. Uh, but then you'll have another tier of grading companies. But there's a whole lot of grading companies that are just not real. real. They're false markets in the sense that if you buy an MS68 coin, it might only be an MS65 coin. You might consider that be more of misrepresentation. I don't know exactly how to categorize it, but I think it can fall under this false market because it's just not a real market. Those coins are not gonna trade at MS68 prices. So that is also another thing. One last false market, before I let you guys leave your comments down below about your false markets, is gonna be some of the grading guides or the price guides. Be careful out there. There's a whole lot of very good information, a lot of good grading guides, but also there's a lot of misleading stuff. Unfortunately, the grading companies that I just mentioned PCGS and NGC, both their grading guides, you have to look into the marketplace and see what things are actually trading at. Some of that, sometimes that stuff is accurate, but other times I'll see things that are priced off by 30, 40, 50%. And so the grading guide is the false market. And understanding the real market usually involves a little bit of personal research to look into the coin and see what they're trading at. So be careful for false markets out there, my friends. There's some obvious ones, but you don't want to end up with any big boo-boos in the financial world when it comes to coin collecting. Uh, please watch out for your elderly loved ones. They get preyed upon all the time when it comes to this stuff. So keep an eye on them. If they're, if they're ordering coins, look into it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.